Hello all. This is Dr. Shilpi Reddy and welcome to live and we're going to talk some exciting topics and it's going to be a huge learning journey this way. I wanted to really use my time uh, so that I interact with a lot more of you all more frequently and uh, this is one way I thought I will make sure that uh, we will keep in touch and uh, this is all about today's topic and uh, today's topic is what care should you take during this lunar eclipse there are several pregnant women out there who are looking for advice and uh, what they have to take care for this lunar eclipse as you all know that lunar eclipse is uh, on Sunday <clears throat> and that too in the night and uh, all pregnant women in my OPD uh, they are coming very anxious and uh, they are really really wanting to know that is there anything specific that they need to do for this lunar eclipse and uh, I wanted to you know talk to all of them together so that uh, precisely I'll be able to give good advice uh, that is actually needed and uh, when you talk about eclipse eclipse is a you know such a huge phenomena for uh, you know astrological significance there are several you know aspects of it geological uh, significance that is a so much of geological significance and we have uh, uh, so many you know associated myths beliefs traditions uh, that are there with uh, eclipse and uh, every you know society whether uh, uh, communal or something like that they have their own beliefs and they follow their own traditions and uh, this life is not about traditions beliefs and all we will be a little more scientific and uh, as i say that scientific evidence we're going to talk about the scientific evidence uh, about the eclipse now mm, talks apart i would also be telling some tips that uh, you know it will keep a little more in conjunction with both the things neither you know too scientific or neither too traditional so this eclipse is lunar eclipse forever uh, i've been telling that lunar eclipse and solar eclipse should not be visualized directly because there are some rays that uh, might harm and cause damage to the eyes whether it is pregnant, ch ch a child or an adult or an old age person, eclipses should not be visualized directly. There are mechanisms that uh, are uh, you know, set to visualize them in a safer way. So there is no question of visualizing eclipse directly because there are some harmful rays that eclipse do give. And uh, another very, very important thing is uh, <coughs> during an eclipse, uh, it is ideal to be indoors and uh, because uh, why traditions have been built because there were lesser homes and people used to sleep outside and live outside uh, most of the time and home used to be a place for other activities sleeping outdoors was a common thing so that's why uh, during an eclipse they, they used to say that don't sleep be active be alert but now the eclipse that is coming up day after tomorrow it's lunar eclipse you can actually sleep off because it's in the night you don't have to be active you don't have to do anything all that you need to do is have your food keep yourself hydrated and sleep and take rest and uh, another very very important thing that pregnant women are asking these days is about staying still in bed and not moving and not doing anything and uh, you know not even drinking water or food uh, during the time of eclipse you know, the eclipse lasts for about sometimes about half an hour or one hour one and a half hour it is okay if you don't want to uh, you know be active just uh, uh, stay in your bed if you are interested otherwise not to move is of no uh, significance you can move around there is no uh, as far as you're indoors there is no restriction at all and now about having food this time it's coming in the night so you can as well have your dinner and retire for the day but not having food and water 
for a period of half an hour, one hour is okay. But beyond that, two, three, four hours, sometimes it is overdone and uh, over projected. So no, no, none of the eclipse lasts for so long. So you can as well take into consideration some time during the active phase of eclipse, and uh, you can even honor your cultural beliefs in to an extent. But uh, not having water for half a day and not having food for half a day especially during pregnancy is really really unacceptable and uh, these kind of uh, things need not be followed and uh, you can make sure that uh, you are well hydrated this is something that is very very important and uh, talking about few things that uh, people usually say that uh, you know don't use scissors or don't use any instruments or don't scratch yourself and all these things these have really you know no such significance as of now uh, for the eclipse that we are looking at and <clears throat> if you are you know traditional you believe something you can chant your uh, you know some religious books you can read or religious things you can sing or religious things you can do they have no harm whatsoever during pregnancy and uh, uh, it is not mandatory as per medicine and uh, as per anything that you should take bath after an eclipse and sleep but yes there are so many energies that shift and drift uh, because of the energies and uh, because of whatever uh, changes that happen in one's aura and one's surroundings people would want you to do a bath and then sleep after an eclipse but it is not mandatory for uh, a pregnant woman to get up at that time and then take bath and sleep it's not mandatory i i've been telling my patients uh, in the opd that don't worry uh, it is okay if you eat and sleep for the day and don't worry about you know how you move in your sleep don't worry about you know being very strict with your food just be like a normal day and you know get away from the hassles of going outside and venturing things outside so eclipse is a very beautiful celestial event and we should actually you know globally there are millions of people who would want to watch uh, an eclipse uh, by safe methods and uh, there are several people out there who actually wait to see that phenomena happen and uh, to look at that beauty and they use their gears and measures and how to watch the eclipse and all and uh, thanks to televisions and uh, internet and all these things you can watch the eclipse from your home from your you know gadgets whatever you have and <coughs> they will keep uh, showing that the next day the next day and all and uh, other than that lunar eclipse is not harmful so pregnant women out there it's a clear signal don't worry and uh, you sh it should not be a concern and uh, uh, you should not be worried as such yes you will have elders giving you advice uh, do not ignore them you have to listen to what they say but make sure that you do not fall into a lot of discomfort and to move to scratch to sleep and to drink water is never a problem in pregnant women during an eclipse it's lunar eclipse just take care nothing specific or no other specific instructions uh, are necessary and it's in the night time so you don't have to do anything and uh, it is not going to harm you it is not going to harm your baby and uh, eclipses do not cause cleft lip and cleft palate it's only a misnomer there is no scientific evidence backing that so this is what uh, i wanted to talk today about eclipse and uh, i could find some best time moments to talk to all of you all and that's why i did this live and uh, see you all in another uh, interactive live session i think i would be doing them uh, often because uh, i wanted to cover certain topics that uh, so many women out there are asking and uh, uh, this is the best way that i can do and manage my time and uh, mm, 
anybody who has any doubt or they want to know about uh, a topic like that please do dm me and i will keep a note of it and make sure that i will talk about that topic in an elaborate way and education is something that we should really look at and uh, education from the right perspective is important uh knowing so many things in the wrong perspective is causing a lot of problems these days so let's uh, keep learning things let's keep talking and interacting um uh, and uh, i can take couple of questions somebody has asked uh, some food for fertility boosting that's my favorite topic and fertility boosters are just common foods you know the most common foods for fertility are for example i'm telling you tomatoes tomatoes have lycopene and they have so many antioxidants that improve your uh, general fertility levels and also uh, moringa yes drumsticks and moringa leaves are also very good boosting for fertility you have all nuts and seeds uh, that are boosting for uh, <coughs> fertility i always tell my patients that eat fresh and uh, fresh food has a lot of benefits for fertility and uh, when you cook also don't overcook especially the green vegetables and all don't overcook and uh, when you use uh, you know fruits use it as a whole fruit rather than mixing with all the fruits together so whatever is fresh whatever has color to it you know like beets carrots you know spinach anything that has color to it is having a lot of antioxidants especially the berries also have a lot of antioxidants and uh, these kind of foods are uh, you know fertility boosting foods so one question is that and uh, can we travel during eclipse i don't recommend travel normally also i don't tra I recommend travel for pregnant couples because i feel that it is it is in a way disturbing the pregnancy in one way or the other so i always tell them do not travel out station and uh, it's not good uh, you know because there is a slight increased chances of miscarriage and who will fall prey to that chance we don't know so uh, i do not recommend travel during pregnancy so in that way no traveling during eclipse also is what my uh, you know advises and um, uh there let's look at some more questions <clears throat> oh can you talk about hpv vaccine during pregnancy hpv vaccine is not recommended during pregnancy and uh, it is one of the vaccines that we are giving in children age above 9 years be it boys or girls till about 16 years you can have two doses uh one uh on the day of vaccination and one after four to six months and uh, for anybody who is above 16 years uh or anybody who is sexually active there is three doses and i usually prefer doing a, a pap smear and hpv dna test before giving vaccination in adults uh because we need to check and uh, vaccination is three doses i recommend uh, anybody who comes for pre conception and not planning pregnancy for at least 8 months or 1 year i recommend hpv vaccine at that time and postnatally again uh, we recommend hpv vaccine because immediately after delivery you would not be planning another pregnancy for couple of months so that's one time that uh, you can counsel them for hpv vaccine and we have uh, hpv 9 strain vaccine now in gardasil gardasil 9 and gardasil 9 covers nine strains of hpv virus and uh, this is one of the vaccine that uh, is of uh, use because it does not it not only covers uh, cervical cancer prevention it is also working against anorectal cancer and oropharyngeal cancer so wherever hpv is causing vac uh, uh, cancer tendency all these places it is working and uh, So, mm, so these are some questions that I could take, and uh, 
see you all and uh, bye bye i will catch up again with another interesting topic and i have a list of topics from the dms that i have got and i will catch up with another interesting topic uh, maybe tomorrow at the same time see you bye bye have a nice day